welcome back to the channel and the latest in my series of videos on how to pass an advanced driving test. So I am Rosper, police standard, police advanced, I need the emergency services test. And in this video I'm going to look at acceleration sense. Now there's a very nice definition of acceleration sense in the old blue road craft. I'm going back to the sort of pre-92 road craft. You won't find it in the current one. I can't quite exactly remember the definition in the current one. But the previous definition was this. It's the ability of the driver to vary the speed of the vehicle through accurate use of the accelerator to meet changing road and traffic conditions. Bit of a mouthful really that, isn't it? I'm going to give you a different definition of acceleration sense and that is this. The accelerator works both ways. If you press the accelerator, the car picks up speed. And if you lift off the accelerator, the car will lose speed. That's effectively what that first definition means. But on any advanced driving test, the examiner is looking for a good use of acceleration sense. Now I want to be clear at the start of this video about one key thing, and that relates to engine braking. Now engine braking is something I get asked a lot about in the comments and, and questions under the videos. And to be clear, acceleration sense is not engine braking. And I'll go into a lot more detail in that a little bit later on in the video. But to start with, <clears throat> let's have a look at what, what your examiners will be looking for in relation to acceleration sense. What is it? What does it mean? Well, like I said before, it's a recognition that the accelerator works both ways. So on a downhill run like this, I'm holding third gear and I'm just maintaining my speed with a very light pressure on the accelerator. But then when I lift off the accelerator, it holds the car at that speed. So what's happening is when I accelerate, like I'm doing out of this corner, I press the accelerator, throttle's open in the fuel injection system, fuel and air mixture is allowed into the engine and the car accelerates. And I've got direct control of that through my right foot on the accelerator. When I lift off the accelerator, it closes the throttle or throttles in the fuel injection. It prevents that fuel and air mixture getting into the engine. And all that's going into the engine then is air. And every time the piston comes up on the compression stroke, because there isn't a significant ignition of fuel and air, then that compression actually slows the car down. It's what I call the retardation effect of lifting off the accelerator. And that retardation effect, you get more or less effect in different types of cars. <clears throat> Smaller engine cars or very heavy cars tend to have less of that retardation effect. Lightweight cars and diesel cars, especially because they have a high compression engine, tend to have more of that retardation effect. So each car is different. The effect tends to be a little bit stronger in manual cars and a little bit less strong in automatic cars, by which I mean full automatic, traditional automatic with a torque converter. But DSG, PDK, any of the dual clutch uh, transmission systems, uh, you'll get a better retardation effect, very similar to in a manual car. And if you have good acceleration sense, it means you're not constantly dabbing the brakes just to make small adjustments to your speed. So having good acceleration sense means you've got to have good observations, good long forward observations. You've got to spot the areas where you'll need to slow nice and early. And rather than driving right up to things and just dabbing the brakes and making little adjustments to your speed with the brakes, you're going to do it nice and early by lifting off the gas and just making little adjustments with the gas pedal. One example of where you might want to use acceleration sense will be on a long downhill slope where you're trying to maintain a constant speed, maybe a 30 mile an hour speed limit. If you've got your car in fifth gear, chances are it's going to run away from you a little bit on that downhill slope and you're going to have to constantly dab the brake pedal just to check your speed and bring it back down to the speed limit. If you've got good acceleration sense, you might choose to hold a lower gear, and I'll come to the difference between engine braking and, and uh, acceleration sense in a minute, but you might choose to hold a lower gear, which will give you more of that retardation effect, and will hold you within the speed limit without you having to touch the brakes. Now, acceleration sense um, fits nicely in with my concept of flow as well. So we're coming up to a nice national speed limit road now. 
and we could drive it really quickly and press the brakes hard and accelerate hard out the corners and all that kind of stuff but if we drive it with a little bit of finesse and a little bit of acceleration sense you'll find that you know the times that you need to press the the brake pedal are actually minimal even though you might be maintaining a reasonable pace along the road so here for instance i'm approaching a series of bends i know it's a right into a left i could accelerate up to it hard brake change down but instead what i've done is lift it off in fourth gear and now i've got the speed to where i want it to be i'm going to change down to third gear for the flexibility to negotiate these corners so here's the important thing we don't use the gear to slow the car so if i'm using acceleration sense i'm going to leave the car in the gear that it's in and lift off and if i can achieve the speed that i want to that deceleration in the gear that i'm in once i've achieved that speed i'm going to take the gear i want you to remember the schematic for system i want you to remember the five phases information position speed gear and acceleration and let's concentrate on the speed and the gear phase speed comes before gear so at the moment i'm driving this road at a reasonably quick pace within the speed limit i've got it in fourth gear and i'm just lifting off gently for that corner and then repressing the accelerator then just to balance the car through the corner but let's be clear about this if i need brakes i'm going to use the brakes so when you've watched my other videos about system you'll see that on the approach to a corner like this i will brake come off the brakes and take the gear with acceleration sense we're not using the brakes to slow the car we're just lifting off the gas but then when we get to the hazard we might need a lower gear in which case we'll take the gear for the hazard after we've adjusted our speed but what about engine braking reg everybody asks me about engine braking <laughs> let me give you my definition of engine braking and then we'll break it down and i'll explain why it's not a good idea to use engine braking okay engine braking is deliberately taking a gear to slow the car down so there i've gone from fourth to third and in a lower gear i'm going to have a more significant deceleration effect when i lift off the gas than i had if i left it in fourth gear again here fourth to third car slows down then i accelerate through the bend well first of all if you're looking to pass an advanced driving test and you may well be if you're watching this video you're doing your system out of order we're taking a gear before the speed phase we're going information position gear speed and then acceleration so we're out of order on the system but what's happening when i'm taking that low gear let's do it again for this corner there's a left hander coming up i'm going to take third gear now to slow the car down and it does significantly slow the car i haven't needed the brakes there for that corner what's wrong with that well first of all in this car when i use engine braking i am only slowing the front axle because the engine and the drivetrain only have an effect on the front wheels of this car because it's front wheel drive in the m2 even worse i'm only slowing the rear axle it's a bit like slowing down with the handbrake now, you don't need to know a lot about vehicle handling characteristics to know that slowing down with a handbrake will be a really bad idea and the second reason i don't really want to use engine braking is because if i've got any following cars or following traffic i'm not going to show any brake lights so if i take third gear here on this on this descent yes it slows the car you can hear the car it's losing speed but if i've got somebody behind me i'm not going to show many brake lights they're not going to know that the car is going to slow down and there is another really fundamental reason why we try and avoid using engine braking it's not what the engine's for i've got a really good braking system on this car every modern car these days has a very very good effective braking system you tie that in with modern suspension systems modern abs systems and modern tires the most effective way to slow the car under any circumstances really is on the brakes don't forget the brakes work on all four wheels the engineers who've designed the car 
have balanced the brakes effectively between how much braking power goes to the front wheels and how much braking power goes to the rear wheels. So I'm guessing here but it's about maybe 75 percent of the braking effect goes to the front wheels and 25 goes to the rear wheels. That makes sense because when you're braking the car's weight goes forward, it removes weight from the rear, most of your braking effect is at the front but you still want some brakes on the rear axle. Stabilises the car, keeps it braking in a straight line. Whereas with engine braking you're not getting that effect and actually it's not massively effective, it does slow the car down a little bit but if you want to slow the car we're going to use the brakes. So if you're using brakes at the speed phase, it's brakes and then gear. And the gear is to maintain the speed then and the gear is to go. Here, for instance, into a 40 limit, I'm going to break it down to 40. And then I might want to take third gear because it's downhill. The third gear is going to hold me nicely in that 40 limit. To be honest, the fourth gear will hold me nicely. That was just an example. But fourth gear will hold me nicely on the hill as well not having to touch the brakes on this downhill run. So back to acceleration sense then, where else can you give a good, um, a good demonstration of acceleration sense to your examiner? What's your examiner looking for? Well, unless you live a good distance away from a motorway, there's a good chance that your advanced driving test will include some motorway. A motorway is a really good road in which to demonstrate your acceleration sense. It's very rare that you should have to brake when you're on the live carriageway of the motorway. Um, but you can give a good example of acceleration sense as you join the motorway. So as you probably know, you're joining a motorway, you drive along the slip road, you should match your speed to the speed of the vehicles in lane one and fit into an available gap. I know that some people will give you a courtesy and will move out, but don't always expect that. It's your job as the joining vehicle to match your speed to the vehicles in lane one. And how many people do you see hammering down the slip road and then braking hard because there's a lorry in lane one and then braking to get in behind that lorry? Much better to do it with a little bit of finesse and a little bit of acceleration sense. So let's join the motorway now. Very, very long slip road, this one. This is junction five of the M65, going westbound. See how long the slip road is. So I'm not over accelerating, it will be easy to get up to 70 miles an hour on this slip road, piece of cake. But I'm accelerating up to about mid 50s, because that's where your heavy goes vehicles are on the speed limiter. Now I'm looking in my mirror, looking over my shoulder, yeah, building my speed up now for these vehicles, and using acceleration sets. So the Lexus was already out in lane two, but I've used acceleration sense to fit in in front of that BMW. Now I'm off the gas, rolling up behind this Porsche using acceleration sense before moving out into lane two. It's been very easy to be hard on the wrist. I've got some manoeuvring in front here with this blue BMW, so I'm just backing off a little bit. I'm doing all of this speed adjustment through acceleration sense. When we're exiting the motorway, well, you're going to use acceleration sense as well, just to pick where we want to be in lane one, just to get across so that we're in lane one, the very latest at the 300 yard marker, ideally at the half mile marker. What I'm not doing is braking in the main carriageway, cutting in front of people, braking hard, it's a subtle technique is acceleration sense. It can be very satisfying when you get it right as well. But I, want to be, I want to be very clear about something else in relation to acceleration sense as well. Some people get a little bit obsessed with it and they try and remove as much braking from the driving as they possibly can. And that starts to affect your progress. I will talk about progress and restraints in another video, but progress is about getting on with it. And you can use the brakes effectively and still retain a good element of smoothness in your driving. It's finding the right balance. But acceleration sense is one of the tools that you want to keep in your toolkit and bring out on your advanced car test at the appropriate times. And, and your instructors, your observers, 
will help you to improve your acceleration sense and will help you to judge when it's appropriate to use that skill. So what I'll do now is, we'll go on a little national speed limit road near here, you've seen this road many times before. I'm going to drive that road mostly using acceleration sense. There are a couple of times where braking is going to be necessary. But for most of these corners, I'm just going to try and use acceleration sense at the speed phase rather than constantly going to the brakes. <clears throat> and I want you to see, as I drive this particular road, I want you to see that I'm driving it at a good progressive pace within the speed limit, but a nice progressive pace. And I also want you to know, I've got the foot camera on, I'm not so sure black shoes were a good idea, maybe I need to bring the red shoes out of retirement, but I've got the foot camera on. You can see what I'm doing with my feet, you will see just how little I brake when I'm driving along this national speed limit road. Okay, so here's the national speed limit. Let's check the mirrors and move out for this cyclist. I'm going to hold third gear now for this left-hander. Just looking at the limit point, it's moving away from me there and I'm balancing the car on the gas. Remember, we want the car under a little bit of acceleration to reach these corners just to maintain stability and keep balance. We're up ahead now, the road's disappearing out of here into a left-hander. So I'm just easing back off the gas and I'm using acceleration sense combined with the uphill just to check my speed and bring my speed down a little bit for this next little series of bends. Once we're at the bends and my speed's correct, here, I'm going to take third gear for a little bit more flexibility. What I'm not doing is taking third gear to slow the car. There's your difference. But now I'm going to use third gear. I'm going to ease off the gas, using acceleration sense for this left-hander, and then driving the car through the corner with a little squeeze on the gas pedal. Picking the speed up now. It's a fourth gear. I'm looking up ahead, as you can see the road bending round to the right. So again, I'm lifting off the gas in fourth gear, using the hill and deceleration just to get my speed right before squeezing the gas again into the right hander and then easing off until my view opens up over the crest. And I can see that we're coming into a 30 mile an hour speed limit area. So I'm just gonna stay <clears throat> so I'm just gonna stay off the gas and then just bring my speed down to 30 as we get to the speed, to the speed limit. And then once it's at 30, then I'm gonna take the lower gear and third gear is going to hold me now through the village but I'm not using third to slow the car I'm using it to hold me as we go through the village also a bit of local knowledge I know that the national speed limit comes back in in a minute just off this next bend so third gear will give me a nice amount of acceleration out into the national speed limit so I'm checking the mirrors now I'm going to move out early here for these park bonds and we can start squeezing the gas up into fourth gear so looking ahead the road's bending round to the left I'm just using acceleration sense in the uphill just to get my speed correct into that and now I can see the road's bending right in the distance so I'm lifting off the gas a little bit early uphill and deceleration gets the speed correct take third gear and then drive the car through the corner I'm just going to maintain third gear until I can see where the road's going and it's going round to the right in the distance so I'm easing off the gas now in third gear that gives me good acceleration sense into this right hander where I can just squeeze the gas and maintain balance through the corner. Up ahead I can see a sign for a bend to the left. So I'm off the gas now. Now we will need just a little bit of brakes for this one. Just a touch. And third gear is appropriate gear just to give us a little bit of drive through the corner. Now I'm going to keep third gear for this left hander. And now I'm lifting off for the right hander, not braking. Speed's correct now just accelerating gently out of the corner in third gear. I'm going to keep third gear again now for a little bit of flexibility. <clears throat> the car in front's braking. I don't need to because I've just lifted off the gas and used acceleration sense to get our speed correct. And here's another good example of where you can use acceleration sense. It's maintaining a good following position. It's a real skill list doing it just through acceleration sense. 
because you're trying to judge what the car in front's going to do. You've got to look in front of the car in front, you've got to see what they're going to be braking for, or what they're going to be slowing for. But it's quite interesting sometimes to judge yourself against the car in front. A lot of people are what we call comfort brakers. They just dib dab on the brakes all the time for their own comfort. Um, and if you can judge yourself against that, count how many times the person in front brakes compared with how many times you brake. So on that little national speed limit road there, Sandy Lane up through Brindle, I braked twice. Once for the speed limit uh, and once for that tighter left-hander. And we maintain a good pace within the national speed limit, the sort of pace and the sort of use of acceleration sense that will get you a good pass, certainly at IAM or Rosper on an advanced driving test. So as usual now, the last question is what are the examiner's looking for? Well, if you're doing your IAM or your Rosper test and you're looking to get a pass or a bronze or a silver, the examiner is looking for a good use of acceleration sense, minimal amounts of comfort braking, and be careful, they're definitely not looking for gear before brakes. So on any of the tests, the examiners do not want to see you taking a gear to slow the car down. Acceleration sense is fine, but if you're taking a gear to slow the car, you are out of sequence on system, and that will result in a fail. If you're looking for an IAM first or a Rosper Gold, you need to be more consistent with your good application of acceleration sense. So the examiner wants to see that you've got a really good feel for the car in whatever gear that it's in, and that you can use that deceleration effect to get your speed right on occasion on the approach to hazards. And that needs to be more consistent throughout the drive. Now, if you're doing a police standard course, or, or more importantly, a police advanced course, the big difference between police driver training and, and civilian driver training is that you've got an exemption from speed limits. Now, on your standard course, your instructors will explain to you where your cap's at over that, how much you're allowed to go over the speed limit, in red ring speed limits and on national speed limits, but generally in training you're only going to be going above the national speed limit. On advanced car courses you're going to be going well above the national speed limit, where it's safe to do so. And what that means is that although you still will have plenty of opportunity to demonstrate acceleration sense through a series of bends for example, the fact that you're going to be travelling at higher speeds means that you are going to be more reliant on the brakes to get the speed right. So if you're travelling at well in excess of 100 miles an hour, and you will be many, many times during your advanced car course, you cannot rely on acceleration sense alone to reduce your speed in enough time. You could do, but it's going to take you ages and that's going to affect your progress. So your examiners will expect you to be more reliant on the brakes at the speed phase of the system. So that's it, that's acceleration sense. It's a fairly straightforward principle that the accelerator works both ways. You probably didn't need me to tell you that, to be honest. But good application of acceleration sense is, a, is, is an indicator of a really good advanced driver. So if I get in on test with somebody and immediately they are using good acceleration sense, minimising the braking that they need for the speeds that they're travelling at, and if that isn't affecting the progress along the road, I'm going to be quite impressed early on in the drive, early on in the test. If, however, you get in and you're constantly going to the brakes and dibby-dabbing on the brakes just to keep your speed correct and you're not selecting an appropriate gear once your speed's correct and it keeps creeping up or if we're on the motorway again and you're just you're requiring the brakes to fit into gaps or to join carriageways then I'm going to be less impressed and I'm going to be marking you down on your acceleration sense but that's it for this video, thanks for watching don't forget this is a series of videos about how to pass an advanced driving test. There is a specific playlist and if you're looking through my videos for the videos that relate to that playlist and that will tell you talk only about passing advanced driving test, uh, you'll find the thumbnails are in blue. So look for the blue thumbnails. If you want a notification every time I upload a new video, subscribe to the channel, press the notifications button and go and have a look at the website as well, reglocal.com. There's loads more information there about advanced and performance driving. 
information about the books that I've written that you get from Amazon and how you can get a day's driver or rider coaching with me if you fancy a ride out. All you have to do is drop me an email through the website and we'll sort something out. But for now, thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.